cold? Yeah. Hectic week. Hectic week, okay. Yeah. yeah. That was me three years back. <laughs> <laughs> so not too far off, uh, unlike other say, people. Yeah. Not well, I say hectic work, not school or week anymore. So it's, it's a different hectic, but still, still works. Um, so, hey, uh, my name is Karthik. I passed out in 2018 and I've still been, uh, okay, not passed out. I graduated, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Recently, someone made the joke with me. They're like, no, passed out, such a strange word to use, you know, as if you're passed out on the side of a road or something. And that's just the Indian thing, right? You're used to saying that passed out. But yeah, I graduated in 2018. <laughs> still alive, still kicking. Uh, so, yeah. I thought, okay, let's give it a shot. Let's try interacting with people, see how this goes. So today's topic is pilot your life. So I guess most of you saw the poster, right? Yeah, yeah. You saw the auto word being striking, striking out. Yeah, let's start with autopilot, okay? How many of you like Tesla? The car, not the person. Uh, <laughs> The person was good too, but I don't know what he did for autopilot. Okay? I know Tesla does something for autopilot. Um. <laughs> you guys like the autopilot feature of that? Who who wants to own a Tesla eventually? You know, never driven it. Okay. <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm not gonna make any comments. <laughs> uh, you guys are excited for the autopilot feature, right? Like, why do you guys like that autopilot feature? Tell me that. Like, I personally like it. Let me go first, I, because I'm self-centered and I like to talk about myself. Uh, but yeah, uh, I like it because you know you can drive hands-free, and I personally enjoy tech. I mean, we are all we all go to a tech school, so I'm pretty sure all of you guys have some inclination towards technology. So I like tech and how you know the company themselves try to make it better and probably avoid more accidents on the road, right? So that's one thing that I'm excited for. Why do you guys like autopilot? Or what are you excited about it? Something that is intriguing actually. It's intriguing? Experience in India. Mm -hmm. so I just want to experience that. Curiosity actually, how it actually works. Yeah. In India, it's like that. Yeah, it's definitely not going to work, right? Come on. <laughs> definitely not going to work. <laughs> it has to learn how to see cows on the road, you know? <laughs> That's what it has to learn first. Not other cars are humans. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but is it like you put an end destination and it'll just get you there? Yeah, it'll just get you there. Yeah. Fancy, right? Ask him. There are videos online. People literally, they sleep behind the wheel. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So it's intriguing. Another thing? Anything else? You don't have to learn how to drive. That's a life skill, okay? You still have to learn it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So you don't have to drive. So let's just say, you know, uh, you don't want to learn a new skill or it's easier for you to There's just course through life, you know, without, without having to learn something new, right? Okay. Okay, sure. But the idea is, you just don't want to do it, like just an aversion or something, or you're scared, or whatever it may be, okay? Okay. <laughs> Anything else? Okay. See, you don't have to think. Who, me? No, I'm saying autopilot, it's easy. You yeah, you don't have to think if it's autopilot. Hey, guys. Yeah, you don't have to think. Great. So. You know what, that's, that, that's the answer I was looking for, actually. You don't have to think. That's what most autopilot is. <laughs> and, you know, like, it sounds fancy when it's in a car, right? Now just do a paradigm shift. Okay. Aren't you also, like, trusting your vehicle to keep you safe? Yeah. <laughs> so? I mean, like, what if, what if, like, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, Yeah, I mean, that, that is a risk. Right, yeah, that is definitely a risk. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So autopilot is great, but it's not always great, right? That's the main thing. Now, what if the same autopilot were to be applied to our daily lives? Do you guys think we do autopilot in our daily lives? Yeah? Some examples. I'll try to write. My handwriting is bad, but I'll try to write. Uh, 
<laughs> Shower? Okay. Baby pose and pose. Pose? Baby pose. Oh, chores. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Household work. Anything else? Sleep? That's on autopilot for you? <laughs> Breathing, yeah. Fine. Involuntary. Yeah. So he said sleep, okay. I, I know I know a lot of people who have trouble sleeping, man. <laughs> so so you're lucky. You're lucky in that way, okay? <laughs> Uh, hello. So, what else is autopilot for you guys? Eating. Eating? Yeah. <laughs> wow, interesting choices. <laughs> okay. Sometimes, like commuting, like you just walk down the same road every day. You don't. Oh, right. Cool. Uh, so the list goes on, right? Stress. Stress? Okay. Stress is autopilot. Okay. Yeah. Overthinking. Okay. <laughs> wow! I did not expect these answers. You know, definitely not. Okay. Great. Um. Okay. So, what is common between all of these? Okay. 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 <laughs> I'm sorry, I can barely hear you. Relationships, also sometimes get out of Relationships, okay. Um, just saying. Yeah. Relationships, okay? Right back I'm just saying, you know, I'm just, I'm just giving her a hint. Uh, okay. Uh, Okay. So, what do you think all of these have in common? The autopilot features to it, you know, what does it have in common? It's, it's something that we do daily, and yeah. There was probably a point in time where it was thoughtfully done, where it wasn't autopilot. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, at, this, at some point, this was thoughtfully done. Like, showering, you know, when you first learn to shower and your parents taught you, you probably are like, Oh yeah, am I scrubbing properly enough or not, right? <laughs> and then household work. I'm pretty sure most people did not like it when they discovered that they have to do household work, right? I did not. Uh, breathing, we survived. Sleep, eating. Yeah, so like you said, you know, all of these were at some point of time hard. As a kid, probably, you know, you didn't want to sleep, right? And now you want to take naps, right? But the fun thing about autopilot is all of these are okay or some of these are okay to do autopiloting, but sometimes it's not. Like for example, if you're constantly under stress, that's not good for you, right? It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Like you're, you're constantly overthinking, you know, you, you're not able to be in the elements or enjoy life, uh, whatever you're doing. So why do you think we go to autopilot mode in general? Like have you ever considered like why we go to autopilot mode? Some of the reasons as to why. Routine. Daily routine. It's a daily routine. Okay. So you're just used to it. Like you just do it every day and now you just don't want to bother about it anymore, right? Yeah. So any other reasons why? Not living in the Okay, so. Okay. Not living in the moment. Other reasons? Safety. Safety? Like what kind of safety? Like, if we depend on human beings, mm -hmm. which is more safe, but uh, autopilot is like, because technology is handling everything. Oh, okay, wait. Uh. Okay, we, we move past the car stage now. I'm looking at the <laughs> human life stages. Like, 
Like, not do like what? Like we depend on technology now for safety, basically. Okay. Okay. It's a human culture, okay. Uh, who said that? Culture? Mm. Nice. It's a culture to just keep running. Yeah, exactly, right? Uh, Association. Association, wow. More? Would you say peer pressure? Like the society we live in, peer pressure? Okay. Boring, so you run it on autopilot. Okay. I don't pay attention to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's boring. Yeah, cooking is boring. Doing dishes is boring, so you run on autopilot. Great. So, okay, great. You know what? Uh, these are great. Now let's just change this things that we work a little more. What other aspects of life do you think we autopilot on? Like relationships is a great example. Professional work is a great example. Studies is a great example. But you know what, all of you guys have something common and there's something that's very unique and that's not particularly, you know, belonging to everyone else. Like, in, in certain aspects, in your life, you have decided to pilot such a way that you decided to come to the United States and do master's degree. You know, that way, you have taken control of your studies in a certain aspect and you're piloting the course you want to go through, right? Now, does the same thing apply to every aspect of your life? No. Why? That's what we're trying to figure out, like why? Like, why do you think that pilot aspect helps with your stuff, but not in other aspects of your life? Because the main thing is uh, purpose. You know, this why is answered with purpose. I think I spelled it right, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Uh, that's autocorrect, you know, that's autocorrect. <laughs> that, that, that makes me double think whatever I write. Am I writing it right or not? See, another thing in autopilot that has uh, made us lazy and also doesn't really help us. So, yeah, coming back to it, we have purpose. You know, you wanted a purpose, like you had a goal for yourself, set a purpose, like you want to, you know, make more money or get better education or something and you decided to come over here. Now, the idea is to apply the same purpose to every other aspect of your life. Okay, not necessarily breathing and well, maybe yeah, purposeful eating is also good. You know, breathing, purposeful breathing is yoga. Like it can be an exercise. So you can have intention behind all of these in certain aspects where you can apply it. Now, in other to describe autopilot, at least the way I like to think about it is also act first and ask later. You guys agree? Disagree? Yeah, you guys agree? Because how does that act first and act later comes, ask later comes in is peer pressure, association, and basically culture. You know, like you don't care about, you know, what we want to do or, you know, is the, is the job you like, you know, you're, you're doing a job you like or not. Sometimes you just go to college, get your degree, get a degree, uh, finish it in some GPA, whatever you want find the first job that you get out of college and you know, start making money. Did we ever pause to think, okay, is this job going to suit my nature as an individual? Does it suit my character, right? We don't think about that. I mean, granted, you know, we have visa constraints and other stuff, like as immigrants we do, but still, does that mean we can just give up on what makes us feel alive and living and just zone out into the space called just existing? Right? Like, say for example, if you just keep existing in your life, like doing on autopilot, how would you feel every day? Boring. Boring, right? Like how many people, and I mean, okay, so most of you guys are students. Right? How many of you enjoy your studies? Like how many of you got the course you really wanted? Wow, that's a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy, I'm happy. <laughs> New courses, I don't think Okay. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense, right? Some of your electives, you might not have gotten what you wanted, right? Or you might not have gotten the professor that you like, right? So, you know, sometimes it just happens that way, but for the most part, you are able to pilot your life. You are able to live your life. So that's, that, that's the main thing we want to touch upon, the difference between living and existing, pilot and autopilot, right? Um, 
uh, a very funny joke just came to my mind about it. Um, so a friend, a couple of friends, okay, uh, they go and they go to the penthouse suite on the 80th floor and they go all around New York, they have a lot of fun, okay, and they come back and they see that the lift is not working anymore. Let's say like if you guys are in this situation, what would you probably do? Cry? <laughs> Find the emergency stairs. Okay. Yeah. They were as intelligent as you, so they decided to do the same thing. And they decided to climb up 80 flights of stairs. So just to make the travel. Climb up. I thought yeah. climb down. No, no, climb up. Climb up then. Yeah. What are you gonna do? <coughs> Buy new stuff? <laughs> Yeah, so they decided to climb up, okay? And so to make the climbing process less painful, they decided to tell stories. And they keep telling the stories and they reach the 70th floor, okay? And you know what? They ask the last person to tell the story. And that guy goes saying, you know what, my story is one of complete tragedy. They're like, oh yeah, what kind of tragedy, man? Like, we've known you all your life. You don't have any big tragedy in your life. And this guy says, no, we just climbed up these many flights of stairs, but I left the keys at the reception. <laughs> So, classic example of act first, ask later. No one bothered to ask, hey, do we have the keys? <laughs> you know, when they, when they started climbing up, no one bothered to ask that. And the same thing can be applied to every aspect of life. What is the purpose? Okay, I'm going to get this job. I'm going to do this particular stuff in life. Just, just pause, take a second and ask, hey, what is my purpose behind this? What is my intention behind this? What is my key takeaway from this? If you guys have a key takeaway from today, that's it. You know, question. Be inquisitive. Just don't make life choices because other people are making it and they have set a path for you. Great, they have set a path for you. Great, you know, there's no problem in walking that same path if that's your same goal. Just before starting to walk, just ask yourself, hey, now what, will this work for me? The same thing, which I said in a professional setting and relationship setting and everything, can also be applied to our spiritual lives. Most people, even I, initially thought, why think about spirituality right now? I'm young, let me make money. Let me go get a better job. Let me, you know, ace my studies or whatever. You know, let me go around the world. But then again, do we really have that much at the end of all this? Probably not. Right? So, it's better to ask these questions about spiritual life as well right now. Like, hey, you know, what will it make sense to start doing it right now? Even whatever little you can about how inquisitive you are, about, you know, maybe or maybe what is the spiritual life you are looking for. Any form of spiritual inclination that you have, however small it might be, it's worth to explore and give it a shot and ask the purpose, ask the question why and find a purpose to it. It might, be, it might work for a few people, it might not. But you will never know unless you give it a shot. That sounds like a nice quote. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, so you guys want to do a little exercise? Real quick? Okay, you guys have been very excited today. Cool. Okay, uh, what we talked about, existing and living, right? You guys just, you guys take your phones and yeah, everyone will be happy now because I said take your phones. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, just you know, take five minutes or something and write what are all the things that you are currently existing and what are the things that you are currently living? Well, existing refers to autopilot and living refers to pilot, where you have control. Cool? Okay. Like your own life? Yeah, in your own life, yeah. What areas of your life? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's more personal thing, yeah. Because I'm pretty sure everyone is not going to have the same list. It might be similar, but it's not going to be the same, right? <coughs> Sorry? Oh, yeah, uh, sure. Um, like, okay. Um, profession. Um, 
Um, well, I mean, I should not have put it there. That's just my life. <laughs> but, but you understand the point, okay? Like profession or uh, relationships. Uh, maybe I should put it somewhere else. Or you know what? I mean, we have a list here. You can just extrapolate from this here. And you know, it's it's perfectly fine if it is a mix of both. You know, that gray or binary in our lives, right? Other than the things we work with computers, like profession can be a mix of both. You know, you do enjoy it, but at the same time, you feel like it's something that you have to get through with life. So it can be somewhere in the middle as well. So you know, it's, it's, it's just your even like relationships. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, it can be in anywhere. It's, it's a spectrum, right? From zero to one, it's a spectrum. So you just analyze where you are and you take a note for yourself on where exactly you exist in that. trying to understand what I do for a living. That's a very interesting thing, no? relationships being autopilot or pilot. That's a very interesting thing. Like taking it for granted. Exactly, right? We take a lot of times, we take a lot of people for granted and... Actually, I think initially we put efforts... That's the honeymoon phase, you know? <laughs> that's the so-called honeymoon phase <laughs> in the new relationship. Yeah. Cool. You guys have a decent list? Or very browsing Instagram? Uh, but yeah, uh, great. So, just think of three things where you want to move from the autopilot phase to the living phase. Like, just think of three things in that list. Let's start small, right? Or maybe even one. Whichever major thing that you want to change from existing to living phase. Just think of that, right? Now, just give me some ideas on, general ideas, on how would you make that transition, yeah. No, it's not. But then again, it's more based on an individual person, right? Like for example, uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be hard for us to do breathing, you know, very consciously. Like, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Probably not. Boogers are gonna fly on everyone. Okay? But yeah. Yeah, so that's why it, 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 it hits us an exercise, you know, like if you do some breathing, like yoga, and you do it and it's exercise, and it's, that's why I said it's fine to be in the middle, right? But uh, that, that, that's why it's important that you have your own list, and you are maybe particular about something that you want to move from existing to the living space. I mean, how I took living was like experiencing. Like being in the moment, like yeah. being present. Like enjoying, experiencing. Exactly, right, you know, not, not being like, you know what, okay, a classic example in my life for existing is breakfast. <coughs> like every morning I wake up and I eat the same thing. And I'm okay with it. Like and few people are okay with it like that, you know, and it's fine because, yeah, and also it gives me a sense of 
Okay, you know what? what? I can expect something for the day. But if the same thing were to apply for my work, which it does at some times, I get bored. Right now, I, I don't know what to do after a point. I'm like, okay, why am I even doing this? I have reasons, but I'm just telling you. <laughs> I, I, I just think, why am I even doing this? <laughs> the reasons are I have bills to pay. Okay. Um, no other option. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, well, you know what, you know what, there, there are options. It's just that I don't want to choose it at this point of time in life. That is, that is, that, that, that's the thing, like a very close friend of mine said this to me in the same university a long time back, three, four years back. And interestingly, it is true, it has applied throughout my entire life in all situations and it has I, I, I'm still learning how to process it and apply it in life, but it has worked. And what he told me was, 99.9% .9 of times in your life, that is always a choice. You might just not be able to see it. You might just need someone else to show you, hey, you know what, have you tried this? Have you guys experienced that sometimes? Like, it might have been very obvious to us, it, it's right in front of our face, but then we are like, oh, I can't see that choice. Why do you think that happens sometimes? Fear. Fear and? Anxiety. 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 Like outside your yeah. Another major factor that, that is true in my life is tunnel vision. I get so focused on the problem, like if this is the problem, I keep it here. <laughs> And I can't see anything after that point. <laughs> and you know, someone has to tell me, hey, just move back or push it forward, you know, so that the problem is not so big anymore, right? And I have more choices now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, that's, that's, that's why we have friends and we have family and people we trust, right? Like how many of you ask your friends for advice? Exactly, right? Why do we do that? I mean, sometimes it's bad advice. <laughs> but sometimes it's great advice. But then again, it helps, right? The other perspective helps. And sometimes, what they, whatever response they give us, it actually helps us understand, you know what? How important that particular decision is or how big that problem is going to affect us in life. Like, have you had this situation where you ask your friend, hey, you know what, I have two choices, I have to choose one. Which one do I choose? And your friend says one and you're like, no, but I wanted you to tell me this choice. <laughs> have you guys had that experience? Yeah. Exactly. Like, why does that happen? That's because we don't realize until we give that control to another person. Hey, you know what, how important that thing is to me. So, that, that has really helped me a lot. And, you know, maybe you guys can try that as well. But yeah, anyway, coming back. Uh, well, uh, how do you think we can move from existing to living? Some of my points, whichever comes to your mind. Having an intention. An intention, okay. Like you're saying, like breathing, if you do it with an intention to feel. Intention slash purpose, right? Yeah. Okay. Effort, okay. You make a constant effort to move from this zone to that zone. <laughs> Guidance. Guidance. Persistence, okay. Okay. In Okay. okay, so uh, make time. Is, is, is that a good one? Make intention. intention, make time. Okay. Uh, attention. Okay. Appreciate. Appreciate. Yeah. Great. Cool. And one of my favorite things that seems to help me is giving gratitude. Um, you know, 
Like, yeah, have you heard people say, you know, wake up first thing in the morning and you know, be thankful for what you have and something like that? That applies to actually everything in life, essentially. Like, you can say thanks to your friends for being there for you, for supporting you, or your parents for, you know, cooking for you, feeding you all throughout your life. So many things we can be grateful for. And you know, just think about that for a minute. And th there are ways where you can apply that gratitude to help you move from this to that. It, it's case by case basis, but these are some of the resources that we can use. Cool? Yeah. Oh, one thing that, that was reminding me of, I was hearing this, um, it was a kind of meditation, I guess, where we were being asked to feel grateful for like thinking about even our favorite piece of furniture. So even just those kinds of, like everyday objects, like we're sitting in these chairs and these tables. Oh. Wow, yeah, that's, that's nice. <laughs> Never really thought of that. Well, thank you. Um, great. And one more last thing that I want to share. This, this is a personal favorite that I recently read. And I am just trying to wait to apply it. So, generally, do you guys agree that autopilot kind of becomes a habit to all of us? Agreed? Right? This, this is very nice, okay? I, I was... I was surprised when I heard someone say it. So, how do you remove a habit? Like, just, I mean, I'm not asking for ways, like, essentially, but how do you remove it? Like, you work on it, like, constantly you put effort, you consciously make a change, you know, every day, or whenever you do that work that you want to get rid of, you're like, okay, fine, I have to make a change because X, Y, Z reasons, right? Now, you know why it's hard to get rid of it? Say you work on habits, right? And you remove the hedge. What remains? A bit still remains. So you work on it more. You remove the A. What remains? Okay, so you work more. It remains, right? You work more. <laughs> and this point is hard, right? Everyone knows. At this point, it's just getting hard. <laughs> what remains? T, right? Tendency. A tendency to go back to that same habit the same actions that we do. So, it takes a lot to get rid of a habit. But we have resources, and we have friends to help us. And first of all, we want to change. You know, because we know better now. We know that you know, we can move from the zone of not questioning and following people blindly to the point where we can become curious, inquisitive, question, and see what fits us in this world. So yeah, with that, I just want to end today. Remember this. It's helpful. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Thank you for being interactive. And I think we are moving to Kirtan? Yeah. Okay, cool.
Yeah.